Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Elder Irma, for the, uh, the prayer to start us off in a good way. As Kristen mentioned, I also have my daughter joining me this evening. This is Talika Robson. Hi. Um, she's the youngest of my two children. Uh, the reason I have her joining me tonight is because she was the last person to make bullet soup this year. Mm -hmm. um, she made it with my mother and I, I haven't actually made bullets on my own ever. And I haven't helped my mother for a few years. So um, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> She's gonna refresh her. Um, as Kristen mentioned, I am a Cree Nakota woman from the Okanese First Nation, which is located in File Hills on Treaty 4 territory. And I have been cooking and baking for as long as I can remember. I've spent years um, in the kitchen underfoot for my aunties, my mom, my cookums, and my mikush, um, who is my Nakota side, my, my grandmother on my Nakota side. Uh, my dad is from Carrie to Kettle, which is also part of Treaty 4, but they're um, Nakota as opposed to the Cree community of Okanese. Now, um, bullet soup is something that I grew up with my entire life. However, it's something that was only ever eaten on one day of the year. We only ever had bullet soup on New Year's Day. I, I don't know why, but it was, it was primarily the soup that was served when you went from house to house and visited the elders during New Year's Day. The elders were the ones on the reserve back home that would always cook a big meal and welcome guests. And everybody would go and visit each, each home throughout the day. Um, of the elders. It was a lovely tradition and my mother still carries that on even though we no longer live on our reserve. Uh, my mother still cooks a big meal with bullet soup as the feature and serves guests all day in the city here in Regina. So we do still have bullet soup every day despite the fact that we no longer live on the reserve and um, it's a real pleasure to, to make it um, not on New Year's Day. <laughs> Talika did mention though that it was just Lunar New Year, so yeah. I guess it kind of counts yet. So for everybody that registered, if you are cooking along with us, I, I believe the ingre ingredient list and equipment needed was already sent out. Um, for anybody that's just joining us and hasn't had a chance to look at that ingredient list, I can run through it very quickly here. So you're going to need one pound of ground meat. Now I'm using ground beef today, but um, we've also had this soup made with ground wild meat, moose, uh, elk, deer, bison. Um, but if you're not into red meat, you can also do it with ground turkey or ground chicken. I have had bullet soup that was a mix of ground beef and ground pork as well. Um, but today we're just going to use ground beef because it's what we what we we like. Most people's bullet soup is a very very um, simple dish. There's not a whole lot of extra vegetables added into it, at least in our family, there hasn't been. The only other vegetable aside from onion to the meat um, that we add to our soup is potatoes. And typically I use red potatoes, but Talika fell in love with these because they're absolutely adorable. Um, so we're gonna use small white potatoes in our soup today. And that's it um, for vegetables, just potatoes and a little bit of onion in the meatball itself. I also use one egg to bind the meatballs. And um, the water base I've started simmering. You can also add beef stock or brown stock if you like for an extra flavor. We don't typically use beef stock in our, in our bullet soup. We just use water. Um, I do add a little bit of whole milk to my, my meatballs. I'll soak my bread mixture in that. So for my meatballs, I do add um, a bread crumb base. You can use crackers, which I think is what Talika wants to use tonight yes. because this is what she used on New Year's. Or you can use plain bread crumbs or even in a pinch, and we have done it this way with oats, just plain rolled oats. Um, so that's everything you need for your bullet soup. It's very simple. There's not a whole lot of ingredients that go into it. You can add things if you like, you can add seasonings if you like. We only season with salt and pepper. It's a very mild soup, but um, it, it's how we've always had it. Make it your own, just like with the Bannocks, make it your own, fine tune it, find what you like, add more vegetables if you want, add different meats if you want. It's entirely up to you, but I'll just give you the base for the soup. So to start, we're gonna 
get the um, the bread base going. Talika wants to use crackers, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and let her smash them because you do want these in crumbs. There you go. Yes. You wanna do it off camera or on camera? Um, I'll do it on camera. <laughs> All right. Um, so Talika um, had a lot of fun making this bullet soup on New Year's Day. And I think a lot of it was because my mom let her be so hands-on. Cook them, told her, go ahead, here, you do all the fun stuff. So something like prepping the crackers that are going to go into the soup, uh, into the meatballs, was entirely on Tal to do. And she took great pleasure in that. Do you need a rolling pin? Um, okay. Rolling pin? I cannot. Now, you might notice that I also have a very large pot. You're going to want to simmer that, simmer your water as well. I put up eight cups in this giant thing and you can make less bullets if you want or a smaller bullet, like a smaller pot. We've always done bullets in a massive pot because obviously it stays in the stove simmering and it serves people throughout the entire day of visiting. So I don't know how to make less than um, a massive amount. But like I said, if you wanna make less, make less. If you wanna make more, make more. Um, because we're, there's only the four of us here, the meatballs will be fairly large today. And because we're cooking in an hour and a half, there you go. Because we're cooking in an hour and a half, the meatball soup, the bullet soup will not be finished before the end of the program. After we get the meatballs into the liquid, into the broth, we're gonna let it simmer for 40 minutes. And then after that, we'll add the potatoes and let it simmer for another 20 minutes before serving. So typically, what happens here? You, know, you want to do that on the counter? Would it be easier for you? Because this we might... move this forward and then okay. yeah, I'll just do it. This, yeah, let's just do it on the counter. Sorry, there's not a lot of space and a lot of sharp objects on this this small counter. That might be loud, but I do apologize. So. As I mentioned, if you don't want to do crackers like we're doing, you can use um, oatmeal, plain rolled oats, or breadcrumbs. And I'm using plain breadcrumbs here. Um, or I, I could use plain breadcrumbs because that's what I have on hand. Or you can use um, rice. I've seen people use rice. And I think they call them hedgehogs when you make bullets with that. But um, I'm, we're going to use crackers because, like I had mentioned, that was the last thing that Tal made bullet soup with. So Excuse me. How many Pardon? oats, how many rolled oats would you use? Um, for a pound of beef, I use about half a cup. Okay, good, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I, then I, now this is notorious. Um, I have a really bad habit of this. I don't typically measure when I cook. I, um, I just kind of like throw things in a pot and go with it. So there's a lot of forgiveness with this recipe. I don't think you can really, um, you, you can't really mess it up to measurements either way, but it's about half a cup this, that I, I'll use for the, even for the crackers. Now, when I'm using uh, lean ground beef, because it's what was at the store, if I'm using like a fattier meat, like I find moose to be a fattier meat, um, I will skim the top of my broth off as it's cooking, just because I find that it, it gets very oily. Um, my uncles don't like when I do that because they like the grease um, dip, when they dip the bannock in. I, I, I don't like it to be too greasy though. When you're ready with that Talica, just bring it this way and we'll press it. So I am going to be using my, my trusty stainless steel bowl for anybody that was here for the bannock and the fry bread, you, you, you're well acquainted with this. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how long I've had it. It's my go-to bowl for everything. It seems it's got like dents and everything on it. Um, why is it called bullet soup? Okay, um, so it actually has nothing to do with hunting. I, I know a lot of people are like, well, bullets, it's obviously a reference to rifles or something along that line. It's not. It's called bullet soup because this is typically a Métis um, heritage dish. Now, the reason that our family makes it is because I cook um, well, she, she had a lot of family that was Métis. And she, she spoke Michif fluently. And this was a thing that she introduced to our family. So um, bullets actually are called bullets because they reference the French word boulet, which means ball or meatball. Because the soup is just a broth with meatballs floating in it. 
Um, so, so that's why it's called bullets. It has nothing to do with, with hunting or with, with, with an actual bullet. It's meat ball. Mm -hmm. You can use both water and the, the beef stock if you want. Um, I, you know, I'll probably throw the beef stock in this one just because it's such a large, lay, like flat pan and I want it to raise up a bit, um, raise the liquid level up a bit so my meatballs are floating as opposed to sinking. You can use both, or you can just go straight water, or if you really want a lot of flavor, you could go straight beef stock, but you're probably going to need two to three boxes because you, you want a, a fair bit of broth. So I'm going to take the one pound of beef and put it right into the, the bowl. My tray, the dog is going to love that. Okay, so Talika's got our breadcrumbs here. We the actually, you know, yeah, the crackers. You're going to need a, a separate bowl, honey. Because yeah. you need to soak your, your bread. So I'm gonna I've got my beef in the bowl, but we're gonna soak the crackers first. Get me a blue bowl, please. Now, as mentioned, we have uh, about half a cup measurements because of the, we're using one pound. So I'm just gonna take half a cup. I'm measuring, despite my statement that I don't measure. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, like for this, it would be a handful roughly, but we have a measuring cup that matches everything, so we brought it out. So about that much, is that right? A little bit more. Okay, well, see, half a cup is not enough. Okay, so um, I'm going to use my hand. Yeah. You actually said to, like, just pour the whole thing in. The whole thing? That's the but sometimes half. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think a whole, I will. Maybe she have, like, half a big crackers. But she used a massive tray of yeah, fries. Yeah, yeah, this is only half one of those big yeah. fries. So half should be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because otherwise it's way too much crackers. Technically, it was Sorry, we're crazy. having quantity issues because yeah. when, when my mom made this on New Year's with Talika, she used a full big tray. Technically, it was actually a quarter because that thing was huge. Okay. And, and yeah, so my, my proportions are different than what she made when she made it on New Year's. Because she had made it to serve, she made a lot of soup. About that much? I'm gonna I'm gonna let Tal figure this measurement out. And while Tal does that, I will go ahead. I am gonna add the beef stock. I have a full carton. If you have like homemade stock, you can use it too. We don't have any left because it's stew season and I've used it all up. But store bought works just fine. So I'm gonna add this to the water. I do have the water simmering already. You want it to be to be simmering when you add the meatballs because we're gonna drop them right in here and it's gonna cook. In the in the liquid. That is a lot slower than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and let that come back up to temperature. Okay, so you have your, your crackers, that's about how much you need. Yep. Okay, we're gonna add some milk to that to moisten them. I have a fork here for you to stir that. You don't have probably have to use the whole thing of milk. Now, um, I'm going to say she probably increased the quantity of her breadcrumbs to about three quarters of a cup based on eyeballing. So I'm going to have her add half a cup to three quarters of a cup of liquid. I, I want it to saturate into the breadcrumbs. It's just flavorful and moist that way. A little bit more? Yeah, I think so. So just for the record, this is how we cook together. We um, we don't follow recipes. We eyeball things until it feels right. Yeah. We also don't cook unless we're in a good state of mind. So about half an hour to an hour before we do any meal, any big meal or, or an event like this, we'll step aside and we'll just kind of debrief in case you know we're feeling stressed or anxious, sad or, or upset. And just collect ourselves before we come in and we start preparing food. One of the things, the teachings, that's perfect. You want salt and pepper for that? Okay, I'll give you those. Sure. So one of the teachings that my, my grandmothers and my aunties have all instilled in us is to always make sure you're in the right state of mind when you're cooking, because you're preparing food that's gonna feed somebody, that's gonna nourish somebody. And you, you want that good energy to go into what you're preparing. So it, it'll leave people in a good way. So yeah, so if I'm angry, nobody in this house is eating. <laughs> it's straight cereal for supper. Okay, so we, Talika has added the milk and some salt and pepper to these. 
uh, coarsely ground crackers. And it's now, it's not fully mushy, but it, it has some moisture to it. I'm gonna go ahead and dump the entire thing on top of the mint. I'm gonna use this. Do you want to take that? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. I'll give you this and this for the sake. I have also not chopped up the onion. I'm using a medium Spanish onion or sweet onion. You can use white onion or like any kind of onion, really, um, except for purple. I know I've never used that kind of onion for cooking like this like yellow onions. You can buy them in massive bags and they last for forever. We also grow our own onions, but they never make it past November. No, no, we eat them all. We like onions and garlic in this house. Yeah. Onions and garlic and zucchini. Well, we have no choice. We have to love zucchini. Um, no, no matter how, how little plants we plant, we always end up with way too much zucchini because we do garden um, and can every year. So yeah, no, we've had no choice but to learn to love zucchini because we have so much of it. Yeah, there's how many ways can you cook zucchini? About six of have seen so far. <laughs> I apologize, this might burn your eyes because onions always yep, burn my eyes. So I'm only going to use about half of an onion and I'm going to cut them up fairly small. Yeah, I'll give you this to also go put in that double. Thank, Thank you. My helper. I love it. <laughs> so for the onion, I'm just going to cut them into little tiny pieces. I want them to kind of just melt right into the meat. And I've noticed if they're too large and the kids notice them, then they won't touch the meatballs. Yeah. I can't hide it now. They're right in the kitchen and they see it happening. But <laughs> they taste good when they're small, though, right? Right? No. <laughs> so yeah, if you wanted garlic in these too, I'm sure you could add garlic to your, your bullets. Uh, we don't. We just, it's straight onion, crackers, milk, salt and pepper, and an egg, and that's it. It's a very mild, um, a very mild flavored dish. I wouldn't... I mean, some people might call it bland. I don't find it bland. We had enough salt and pepper for it to not be bland, but it's it's mild. It's a mild dish. Can you crack the egg for me? I'm gonna grab the gloves and just put it in. Yeah. Crack the egg in there. Yeah. yeah. you can just crack the egg right in. We'll mix. We'll break it up with the, on the back. Yes. Sorry. We're gonna use gloves because our sink is way on the other side, and um, I don't want to just walk away from camera. So we got some food safe PVC. PV gloves, is that what they're called? I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're plastic, plastic gloves. You can do this barehanded if you want. Um, whenever we're using raw meat, we like to try to wear something to protect us. You're gonna need a fresh one. Yeah. Rylan, Talika dropped the glove. Can you pass us a fresh one, please? There's some ladies. No, I'm gonna go into the cupboard. Oh, go grab a fresh one out of the cupboard. You put the onions in the meat mixture? I did, I put the onions in the meat mixture. So okay. I have in the bowl with the meat, I have the onions, some salt and pepper, cra the crackers that we added the milk to, and one egg. And I'm just gonna mix it all together with my hand just to combine it. Actually, this works really good. While I'm mixing this together, can you put the flour into that? Because you need flour to roll the meatballs, yes? Yes, yes, it's clean. It only had the, um, the crackers measured in it. So we had two scoops of the flour, I believe, in the meatball. So while I'm mixing the, the meat mixture together, Talika is going to prepare the flour mixture. Rolling. Yeah, so before we add the meatballs into the liquid, into our, our simmering broth, we're going to roll them in flour that's been seasoned with salt and pepper. So Talik is putting about, uh, well, she's going to do two scoops, so about a cup of flour into this bowl because it's large. You could do this on a plate with, with only half a cup, because I believe we mentioned you only need about half a cup, but, oh, it's three scoops, three scoops. Um, but yeah, you, you really just want to get a fine dusting on the outside of the meatball, but 
we're using a large bowl, so we did a whole cup. You want to add salt and pepper to that? Then this small spoon can go in the sink. Oh, we see you're done doing that. Ninja. <laughs> okay, so I have the, uh, the meat mixtures all combined. Kyle's just mix them up. So for, for bullet soup, because I, like I said, I'm only making a small portion compared to what is normally made, like this bowl would be overflowing if it was my mom, um, because she, she serves all day and everybody, you know, you want, you want some meatballs in your broth. The meatballs are the, the highlight to the meal. So she, she tends to make a lot of this and her meatballs will be a little bit smaller than mine, just because she's stretching it, which is also one of the reasons why I think we add, um, so much like dry ingredient, like the crackers or oatmeal to it, um, just to help stretch that meat. Because obviously um, you want to stretch whatever you're making to serve everybody. So you don't run out before all your guests have, have had a chance to come by and visit. Now, another thing that was always made, um, usually like, cause they woke up really early on New Year's day. Cause I remember, cause on New Year's Eve, if, your parents were going to go out and celebrate with with other adults you got to go and spend the night at cookums and that was, that was always exciting because all the other cousins were at cookums and, and cookum always like had little treats and games and movies to watch she made it special I and mean, we'd always have a very fun new year's and i always remember her waking up ridiculously early in the morning because obviously we'd wake up because you could smell her cooking you could smell the coffee because she always made her coffee in the morning. She'd have her morning coffee in her smoke and then wash up and start cooking. And one of the things that she cooked a lot of um, for New Year's Day was the meatball soup, the bullet soup, and bannock. She'd make copious amounts of bannock or fresh buns so she could serve fresh buns and bannock alongside the soup. So I'm, is this about right? Yeah. Okay, so I made my meatball about an inch, maybe an inch and a half in diameter. You can make them smaller if you want them to cook faster. You can make them larger if you want larger meatballs. This is just the typical size that I would I would normally make. Um, they, they might shrink down a little bit as they simmer anyway. So now I'm gonna take the meatball. Your hands are your, your hands are still clean, right? Yeah. Could you pull the lid off of this? Because my hands are not clean. My hands are all mean. Oh, could you grab the lid? Yeah. It's probably safer if you grab it. <laughs> we can still see you. <laughs> we can still see you. Is it don't want to hit this. Okay. Oh, yes. No, no worries. Okay. Awesome. You can just put the lid um, back there up. Thank you. Oh, we, we, won't, we, won't, we won't need the lid for a little while. Um, I where do I put it? <laughs> just, just put it back there. Yeah. Okay. So you're good. You're good. You'll figure it out. Talika. Well, okay. So now that I have the meatball rolled and the lids off of this, we can put the meatballs in. I'm gonna roll the meatball in the flour to coat it, or Tal, Tal's gonna take over for me. Yes. Okay, just like that. Beautiful. Perfect. So once your meatball is fully coated in flour, then you just drop it right into the broth. Just like that. Bubbly. Awesome. And then we keep rolling. Yeah, it's easier when there's two because you can just keep rolling our keep rolling. Do you want to switch spots? We can. Do you think it makes more sense? Or are you good just reaching past me every time? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Okay. There Actually. You go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Wait, no. I meant to say. Let's switch spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my bowl and you're going to grab your bowl. This is. No, like a <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, Tala. <laughs> and don't drop it from so high up because it's splashing and scared me. There. There. So yeah, and so when you're making meatballs, bullet soup with your cookum, they usually are telling you stories. Um, at least I that's how I remember making bullet soup. There was, you know, they tell you stories about different things growing up. And I always, I always really enjoyed those moments because 
it felt like you were getting secret insider scoop that your cousins weren't getting because they weren't in the kitchen helping. I was, I was that kid. I would get up super early so I could be in the kitchen. Realistically, it wasn't because I loved to cook. It was because whoever was in the kitchen got to sample as the button went along. And um, I was always hungry because I love food. And um, like it's notor I'm notorious. Oh. <laughs> Everywhere we go, I'm just like, hey, that smells really good. Let me check it out. Actually, so I asked my mom to be here to help me because she's she's the bullet tip maker. She's the elder in our family. That she gets so mad if I said that out loud because she doesn't consider herself an elder. But um, she she is the center point. Like when she cooks for New Year's Day, she's where everybody goes. Um. Anyway, she's they're on a trip right now, and I say they as if she, my brother, and my other sister, they're um, on a trip to BC. They went on a train. And while they're on the train, the um, the 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 cart attendant, I think it's, I, I'm not sure how to what the term is, but there's a like a person that that serves beverages, drinks, and um, just checks on on the people in the cart to make sure that everything is 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 good and that they if they need any help. Now, he he came and he was talking to my mom and Reba and Destin, and he was asking them questions because you know. Uh, they, they, talk, they like to talk, they're like me. We talk a lot to everybody and anyone. Um, and he started telling them that he, he's, he grew up um, in a small community and that he, he made Bannock for the trip for his own personal like enjoyment. And it wasn't for public serve or, or like for the, for the public people on the train. It was just his own private stash. And he brought out some pieces of Bannock and cheese for my mom because my mom obviously loves Bannock. And um, they started talking and he started asking her uh, to tell him if it was as good as mine. <laughs> and honestly, I think everybody's bannock is better than mine because I, I don't know if you cook a lot, your own food never tastes as good as other people's. Like I love when people bring me baking, especially during the holidays because other people's food tastes so much better. It, it's, there's just something about it. Like, I have one coworker, he's from Serbia, and his wife makes these, they're like little wafer cakes, and, and she only makes them at Christmas, and he brought some to, to work one day, and he was sharing them, and I had one, and I'm like, oh my gosh, can you ask her for the recipe, and he's like, there's no recipe, and I'm like, of course there's no recipe, why would there be a recipe, that's what I tell everybody when they ask me for things, I'm like, there is no recipe, it's just, that's just how I made it, anyway, so, um, she did tell me like what she does and what which ingredient she uses and I tried to recreate it and it was nothing like hers it was so shameful um yeah but yeah back to the bannock and the train story so that was this morning they they had bannock made by this this fellow on the train and um anyway it got me like wishing for bannock and then I'm like you know what we have a bullet soup thing tonight so yeah we made bannock for the bullet soup for later because well my mom got bannock on the train and we're having bullet soup here we have to have bannock to go with it. it smells so good it does smell good already so now the 40 minutes of simmering that happens after i have all of the meatballs in i will go i will simmer these for 40 minutes after all of them are in the pot and I know that sounds weird because some of these have been obviously in the pot for 10 minutes or more than the rest of them. But um, that's when I start the timer is when I have all of the, the meatballs in the pot, all the bullets. The bannock recipe is online actually. Um, I believe Reconciliation Regina had it posted at one point, but I, I do know it is online. I can look for the link and, and definitely reshare it. Or I'll just post it on my, on my Instagram page. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm happy to share that recipe. I used to be really stingy of it, but then I'm like, why, why would you be stingy of your bannock recipe? Let people make it like cheese, Jody. So yeah, no, I, I shared with everybody. Um, but I, and I also recommend though, to take that recipe as a base and, and modify it slightly to make it your own. And then it's, it, you can make it, you know, it's then all of a sudden it becomes your secret recipe and, and not, my recipe because honestly it's it's technically not my recipe either it it was um 
learned from my grandmother and I don't know where she got it from. Maybe it's her recipe, but she never gave me the ingredients or the measurements. I, I had to eyeball it and it took nearly 15 years to get it right. <laughs> and I'll never forget the day I got it right. And I served it to my Nana because my by that time my cooking had already passed on. So I had to take it to my Nana and be like, Nana, I know you probably can't compare it because it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if, you, like, I don't know when she would have had my cooking's down at glass, but I'm like, could you please tell me, is it okay? She's like, she ate it and she was quiet for a bit. And then she said in Dakota that it was the best. She's like, yeah, this is your, your, your bannock is, is, is good. And I'm like, what did you say? Cause I was just learning Dakota at that time. So, um, I, even now, I st I'm still not as good at speaking as I'd like to be. Oh, smaller? Are these getting too big? Yeah, but sorry. I'm getting generous with the meatballs. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Some of the pops are in the water. And then she pushed it further and told me that my bannock was the best. And um, then, of course, I got a big inflated ego and just went around telling everybody I had the best bannock in the family. And... Naturally, cousins and aunties don't sit well with that. So all of a sudden, everybody was making bannock. <laughs> my, my, my sister, Reba, who is a fantastic cook, by the way. She makes a better pie than I do. Um, her crust, mm -hmm. next level. So my sister, Reba, made bannock and posted, and she was all proud. And my, my dad, who thinks it's hilarious, um, posted, yeah, your bannock was really good. It was almost as good as Jody's. And I was just like, no. You don't say that to somebody. Um, yeah. I'm like, Dad, please tell her her bannock is better because that sounds so mean. He's like, no, 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 it was, it was really good. But yours just has this extra element. And I'm like, so I'm going to share that extra element with everybody that's here tonight. It's a secret, but um, this is going to be a secret no more. It ain't going to be secret no more. It's the, uh, the secret to my bannock is when it comes out of the oven. I rub it down with butter, unsalted butter, because that's all I keep in the house. And then I sprinkle it with salt. And it just, it gives it this soft, buttery crust with just a hint of salt. And um, yeah, that's, that. there you go. Now you now you all know it. Now you can all go out and make the magic bannock. I, mean, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's because I never tell anybody. <laughs> I want you to do that if you're not telling anybody. Yeah, you're, you're in the kitchen. You're you're like me. You're always underfoot. And then I get to sample stuff with you. Yeah. Last That's meatball. Last one. Are we going to need the lid again? I unintentionally made these in rows. Oh, that's neat. That's so fancy. Yes. All right. Can you just pop the lid back on there for me? Thank you so much. I pick up my gloves now. Yes. Actually, so, you're going to want to go into the kitchen because... Yeah, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to try to take these gloves off without getting my hands dirty. Help? Huh? Can you help? Oh no, I can figure this out myself. Ha, ah, there's one. And then just go under with clean hand. And then there's two clean hands. Yippee. I'm gonna put these all together. And you get you can throw your garbage in now. It's all garbage now. First we got flour all over this. <laughs> Um, you know, just pass me a fresh one. Well, to, or I'll just do it around the, on this. Okay. But I'll give you this. You can put that in the side. Okay. okay. So now that our meatballs are simmering, like I said, we're going to go for about 40 minutes of just meatball simmering. And um, I, I won't lift the lid. You can lift the lid on your soup if you want to check on it. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I'm just hogging up all the space. Mm. Um, I won't lift the lid. I also don't recommend putting the lid on tightly. Like this has vent holes on it, so it, the steam will escape. If you are doing this on a pot on the, on the stove, put a chopstick or a wooden spoon in it or just leave it slightly off center. So it's, because they will start to bubble and- Those um, pots are circles. Yeah, well, it will start to bubble and it will make a mess because it, it bubbles over. Um, but like I said, this is vented, so I'm not worried about that. The lid can just stay on it. Mm. So, as I had mentioned, we in our family do not add a whole lot of extra vegetables to our bullet soup. The only other vegetable we added to into the broth is potatoes. Potatoes. Um, yeah, and so growing up, my grandmother, my cook and beanie had a massive garden and 
she actually she won a lot of 4-H awards for it because it was humongous and incredible and she would can things like a canned chicken if you haven't had it oh, don't wow. try it <laughs> anyways um so we would like we would go picking berries and we would do crab apple pickings or we would get crab apples from people in the local towns like there was a lady that we used to get our crab apples from in Ituna, Miss Philippo, and honestly, um, her crab apples because she would actually can them for us and we just do a trade. Sometimes she would she would give them to us like fresh and we would can them ourselves, but they were never as good as hers. She is I don't know what she did to them, but they were incredible. I do can we do have two crab apple trees in our backyard and we do can them. Yeah, yeah there's two. Well, there's one there and then oh I guess oh. no the other one. So my mom lives next door to us. And I always count her backyard as our backyard because I go into it all the time. Um, but she has the other crab apple tree, and it's actually mini Macintoshes. So they're technically not crab apples. They're so good. They're gigantic. And that tree is very productive. Um, so yeah, so potatoes. You can yeah, but back to the potatoes. Um, we've tried gardening them here in the city. We have had no luck growing potatoes on our own. So we but you can buy local. Mm -hmm. Farmers markets are amazing, and some of the stores here now carry a local product, which is fantastic because you don't have to search them out. Um, normally, for this recipe, what I grew up using for potatoes, and it was red skinned potatoes because that's what my grandmother grew. And they were gigantic, and you'd peel them and chop them into cubes. We're using little potatoes because Talika loves the way these look. Little. They're tiny, <laughs> but I'm still going to cut them in half. Yeah, um, so they are a bit large. Things, so. Yeah, um, we don't want little tiny tiny pieces because it will they'll disintegrate because the soup has to simmer for a long time. Yeah. So the pieces of potato that are in them are fairly large, mm -hmm. and you want a potato that's um, sturdy, which is again why we like the red potato because it doesn't break down as much. Like um, I think is it a russet potato? One of those potatoes gets really like gummy and just disintegrates. These ones will be good. Um, they're boiling potatoes, so they, they'll, they'll yeah. stand up to the sturdy, long, sitting on the stove, simmering, that this soup will endure. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as far as spices go, again, our family only use salt and pepper. We like that, that simple elegance to this meatball soup, but you can add different seasonings. You can add you know, rosemary, thyme. I've seen people throw bay leaves in them. I personally don't like bay leaves in anything, but that's my own personal thing. Um, I think if you're going to do this with turkey, sage would work really, really nice. And for the vegetables, you can add different vegetables aside from potatoes. You know, you can do your, your, your standard soup vegetables, your carrots, your celery, your onion. I've seen people put turnips in it. Um, parsnip. Rutabaga, maybe? Maybe. So. Yeah, but because um, I'm making this the way I remember and the way I know, I'm only going to do the potatoes. I'm going to let Tal go ahead and cut our potatoes. Yeah. You want me to help you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, did, I did bring two knives just in case. Mm -hmm. So if you are using full potatoes or if you're using carrots or celery, go ahead and start prepping them. Um, I'm going to start prepping our potatoes here. So, like I said, I'm going to cut these in half. You want them to be, you know, so you can eat them comfortably, but not so small. They're going to just disintegrate in the broth. And not so big that they're going to take forever to cook. So typically, after 40 minutes of simmering the meatballs, then you add in your, your potato or your vegetables and let that simmer for another 20 minutes before serving. So this soup thing, I mean, it's one of those slow, steady, take your time, visit while you're making it. Um, it's not meant to be one of those quick rushed meals. It's it's a slow prepping for company kind of thing. Yeah, not like canned soup. Not like that. No, not like that at all. No, no. It's 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 a long a long process. Personally, I do remember growing up that a lot of the meals were very slow going, um, like roasts or stews. You know, they sit. They my cooking would start in the morning. Or my mom would start it in the morning and it would it would she would slowly add to the pot throughout the day and the flavors and aroma like you could smell the change as everything was added to it throughout the day the change would smell like the smell would change in the house and i mean it's it's the aroma that really gets me it reminds me of what things were like of course um i mean 
they used to also use a wood stove. So you're missing that element of the, the smell. Is there anything you can't replace or is it just that? Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's anything you can't add to it only because I've never really explored beyond what I know when it comes to bullets. Um, this is the first time I've made bullet soup without my mother or, or a grandmother present or an auntie present because bullet soup is typically made by the elder or, or the, um, the matriarch of the family. I, I haven't had that privilege to do this soup on my own because I we don't host at our house. We're we're still those the younger people that the younger people that would go and visit from house to house. So um, I I don't know if I if there's anything that you wouldn't add. Typically, I think that each family makes it their own and and they do it as, as they see fit. So if there's if there's something you want to try then by all means, try it out. Maybe it'll taste really good and you're onto something that I've never had the courage um, to explore myself. So all our potatoes are cut up. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in the bowl. They were all washed before we even put them in this bowl. So I'm not worried about that. One other thing we're gonna add into the broth, we didn't add it directly into the meatballs. Now, as I mentioned, typically our family only does salt and pepper, but Talika this year from her, her carrot crop has a whole bunch of carrot tops that work very similar to parsley. Mm -hmm. And we were trying really hard not to waste anything from our garden this year. So, yes. so we took all the carrot tops because some of our carrots were too small to, um, you can peel the potatoes because we're working with really small ones, we didn't peel them. But um, if you peel them, I wouldn't cut them then because they're going to be really, they'll be small if they're tiny. But if you're working with a larger potato, go ahead and peel it and, and cut it up. Um, visually, it looks better when it's peeled. That's one of the reasons why we chose the white skin potatoes because it, it blends in. It'll look nice. So yes. So this year, uh, all the carrots that were big enough to eat, we either ate or I chopped up and froze. For, for later use and the carrot tops um, we kept. And some of them we've already dried and, and torn up and then they're in a container over there. But I wanted to show you just what it looks like. <laughs> in our kitchen along one wall we have, that's where we dry all the herbs because we also have an herb garden in, in the summer yeah. and we harvest in the fall and dry everything. And then we have dried herbs for the entire winter months. Mm -hmm. So the, these, don't have a whole lot of extra flavor. They just look really pretty in the broth. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like parsley. I would, I would yeah. say it's mostly like. So tell parsley, parsley, no, it's basil. Oh, basil on pizza. It's basil on pizza. And sometimes yeah. oregano. Yeah. So um, Talika, Talika brought some. I just said your name twice, didn't I? Yeah. It's weird. I glitched out. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Talika's brought some for um, parsley. To, carrot tops and she's going to break them up and we'll add that into the broth at the end. So I'll go ahead and let you do that. I'm going to put these off the way. We no longer need those. Now, um, if you wanted to add a carrot to this, by all means, peel a carrot, slice it up, throw it in, celery, again, same thing. Um, I, I've just, I've never, I've never push the boundaries of, of a traditional soup. It's the same thing with um, with my bannock though. I, I sometimes I try to get creative and I just, it feels weird to me. Like I've tried to add um, things, new things, new flavors into my bannock. And I'm just like, this doesn't feel right. I'm just gonna make a regular bannock and I'll make stones or something else and add the flavors to that. Cause it's kind of like bannock, but not actually bannock. And I feel like there's, I don't know, it's just a weird feeling. Thank you. So we'll just set this aside till we're ready for it. Awesome. Thank you. I will add more salt and pepper. So that's another thing I would recommend to um, when your meatballs are are have, have been simmering for about 40 minutes and you've added in your potatoes, before you serve anybody have a small bowl yourself. Make sure that your seasoning is right. 
Um, that was another thing that I, I picked up. And that one actually, I don't remember it ever being told to me by my, by my grandmothers and my aunties, but I do remember hearing it from um, one of the chefs on the, the Great Canadian Baking Show. He said, make sure you try everything. Yeah. Everything, even if you've made it the exact same way you always make it and you know it always turns out good, try it. Yeah. Always. Because there were some times, well, and, and in that environment, you're under a lot of pressure and everything is so fast. Like I, nobody, nobody who bakes will make a two tiered cake in four hours. I've oh, never wow. met anybody that says, wow. yes, from start to finish, from scratch, I will make a two tiered cake and it'll be perfect. Never, <laughs> at least I've never. Um, but they, they want you to do that on the shelf, right? They, every, and that's, that's it's um, absolutely insane. Um, but he said, try it. Did you try it? I'm like, no, because I didn't have time. No, you need to try it. And granted, the two times that he told me to try it before he even tried it, it was awful. <laughs> so, um, so now I try to make a point of telling people that just make sure you try it just a little bit. Um, because maybe it needs more salt, maybe it needs more pepper, maybe something is completely off and you need to try to redirect the way your broth tastes. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I, when you're rushed, that's the last thing I want to do. I just want to get it on the plate and put it in front of them. I don't, I'm sure it tastes fine, but yeah, like I said, it didn't. Um, Marlon, has it been about 20 minutes? Okay, perfect. So like I said, 40 minutes usually for your meatballs before you add your, your um, vegetables. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, can you grab me another spoon? I only grabbed one and I'm going to need two. This is amazing, by the way. Having a person in the kitchen with you. Sure. It's fantastic. It's, I, I feel so spoiled. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see it from there. I'm just going to, is it okay if I just put this down? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm just warning you so that you don't come near it because it's going to be hot oh, there. Okay. So the meatballs, they start to change in color. So then they, uh, because we're not frying them before we put them into the soup, because, you know, when you fry them, you get that golden caramelization on the edge of the meatballs. But you also end up with that, like, that crunchy crust that um, I don't, you don't want in bullet soup. You want it to be a soft and tender soup, at least. That's my understanding of bullet soup, that it should be a soft and tender soup. Like the elders love it like that. They like it when it's nice and, and easy to eat. And the real, the focal point of this soup, 100% is the meatball itself, is the bullet. You're not really worried about the other vegetables. Part of the reason why it's called bullet soup. Part of the reason why it's called bullet soup, because the focal point is the bullet and the broth. Like, um, because a typical bowl for us, now, we like to argue in the family um, oh, yeah. about, <laughs> about this point. I try to play the, the traditional amount that I should receive in my bowl is four, because that's the sacred number. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's a greedy answer, apparently, because um, normally when it's bowled up, because it's got to you know, serve everybody and it's got to last for for the duration of your company. I mean, you could always make a second pot, I guess, but typically you're, you're, the pot you make should be big enough to last for everybody. And unrealistically, the best bowl is the one at the end of the night because those meatballs have been sitting and they're tender and they're just perfect. And um, you know, they, they've, they've had that opportunity to just really, really immerse in, in the broth and the broth itself becomes so flavorful. Um, but yeah, like by the end of the night, you're not getting four meatballs in your bowl. You're getting two or three. Uh, three is a really big treat. But and I'm always like, well, if you can give me three meatballs, why can't you just give me four? But if you start doing the math, if everybody got four meatballs in their soup, there's not going to be enough meatballs for everybody. So, um, yeah, there, there, there's another like Jody likes to eat in the kitchen story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 the sacred number is four. Please give me four balls. And we also used to get, you know, we used to get in trouble for? We used to get in trouble for not drinking the broth. 
Really? Yeah. I mean, I know you drink the broth, but so Talika likes broth. I love broth. And gravy. Yes. I've never seen any, <laughs> you know those memes that you see where people are drinking KFC gravy and it's a joke? Yeah, not a joke with this one. <laughs> She'll just, I honestly. Um, I have to order a Yeah. And uh, you know what? I cannot make funny. Like I didn't know it was gravy. I thought it was too. I thought it was gravy. So when we were, <laughs> we were taking a course, um, the Regina Pol Citizens Police Academy course at the U of R one year. And I say we because I'm talking about my sister and I and some cousin because there was a lot of people from Treaty 4 that were taking part in this course, which is the Treaty 4 Citizens Police Academy. And we were the pilot project of it. And part of the, the benefit of being in this program is you got to stay at Luther in the dorms and you got to eat at the cafeteria. And every day, because the lineup is long, it's humongous. And I was starving because again, Jody loves food. I'm gonna go ahead and add my potatoes. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm just gonna dump them in and Spread them out. Now I'm gonna pop the lid back on because I want to keep that heat in there. <laughs> so we're at Luther and we're, we go down for lunch at the cafeteria, lunch, supper, breakfast. They're all served out of the cafeteria and it's like a big buffet thing. You line up and you go through and get your tray filled and you go sit down. But they have soup that, that's right there. And there's never a lineup for soup because nobody eats soup. Well, I love soup. I live for soup. Um, it's uh, I was raised on soup, so um, I, I I go I would go and get my bowl of soup, and then I would go stand in line eat the soup while I was in line until I got to the front, and then by then you know I've started I've already had a soup now I can get my food and go sit down, um, and one day I was in a hurry because we were late and the lineup was long and I ran over and I grabbed my bowl of soup. And I threw some crackers in it, and some salt and pepper. And I went and stood in line, and I'm eating this soup in it. I thought it was beef stew, and I'm getting mad because I'm like, there's no meat, there's no vegetables. Like what? They, they must have all sank to the bottom, and I didn't dig deep enough in the darn thing, right? Because they have those big steamer things. And we get to the front of the line, and our our cousin who was in front of us turns around with his tray and he and Reba's like what do you mean there's no so like we're having this sub side conversation behind him about the soup was cheap there was no there's no vegetables or meat in the stew it's it's just broth it was good broth but it's just broth and I feel ripped off <laughs> he turns around with his tray and he's got um meatloaf mashed potatoes with spaghetti sauce on the mashed potatoes and we're like why do you have spaghetti sauce on your mashed potatoes? And he's like, well, it's spaghetti sauce, mashed potatoes and meatloaf. And I'm like, there's no gravy? And just in that second, like everything stopped and I just zoomed in and I'm like, no, no, Jody. And the lady at the counter goes, actually the gravy is where the soup normally is. Um, there's no soup today, it's just gravy. And I was like, no. I ate a whole bowl of gravy with crackers, whole bowl. And um, anyway, that got around and people started realizing that Jody eats gravy in a bowl. So that Thanksgiving, um, Mikush, my Nana, at Thanksgiving, you know, they do the prayer and she's got the whole meal cooked. And before anybody gets up to eat, she goes, hold on. And she goes to the kitchen, she comes back out and puts this bowl in front of me. She goes, I heard you like the gravy. My girl, I saved you a bowl. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm not surprised that Talika eats gravy because clearly I like gravy. Um, yeah, that's embarrassing, but it is what it is. I'm sorry. I am going to go ahead and cut the bannock. Okay. You know what? I think I'm actually going to add some more salt and pepper to this because while the broth looks lovely, I think it could use more salt and pepper because yep. I could just based on my smell. Yeah. Just based but, on the smell. Yeah. It smells real spicy enough. Yeah. It should like, it should have a little bit more yeah. of a so again, that's probably why we only put salt and pepper in because we put so much salt and pepper in. It does smell really good though. I can't wait till it's ready. Do you want to get the um, the bannock knife? Yes. Should I throw your carrot tops in now? Would you Would you throw them in now? Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the carrot top thing. See, when we're in the kitchen, it's not always me taking the lead. Um, the little ones have a lot of knowledge that they're picking up that's fresh in their minds because, I mean, they're just, they were like, right, Talika was just in the kitchen with my mom um, earlier this month learning how to do this. So these, these skills are a little bit dormant in mind because it's been so long since I've done them, whereas they're fresh in her mind. So it's, she leads me a lot. Is the soup so simple to reflect the terms readily available? Is the soup so simple to reflect the items readily available to the Nike? A hundred percent. That is one of the reasons why when we make this soup, it is a very thin broth where it's just, we just have the broth is just thickened a little bit by the flour that we rolled the meatballs in. It's also why, um, like in our family, the only vegetable we put into, into it is potatoes because that's the way my cook will learn how to make it. And she tried to honor the way that she learned um, from her, her, her family who were Métis. It, it's a very simple soup that's meant to feed everybody. And you made it with what you had available. So like I said, if you wanted to make it really, um, with a lot of vegetables and make it a thicker soup than what it is because it is a very if you notice when you look into your pots for those of you that are cooking along there's a lot of broth and uh, and, and then just the few meatballs that are in there um <clears throat> and it goes back to even the, the amount of meatballs you get in your bowl of soup it's meant to share it's meant to to um bring joy to bring joy to fill bellies so it's a very simple dish because of that. So another dish that, that's very similar to this is our rabbit soup. In the winter when we do trap line, um, and like my cousin Penny back on the rest, she still does the, the snaring of rabbits. My dad still does it back on, on his reserve. And they'll bring they'll bring rabbits in for me, which is which is a treat because I'm not gonna snare city rabbits. I could, they're big, but they're probably not very good. So um, I don't think you can do that in the city either. Yeah. But <laughs> that might be a little too res for them. Um, but on the res, I'm back at home on the reserve, they, they, we still snare rabbits. And our rabbit soup is very similar to the bullet soup. We don't add a whole lot of vegetables. It is literally just the rabbit itself and a flour broth where we just mix a little salt, pepper, flour, and water, and, and that's it. Like there, we don't put onions or potatoes in the rabbit soup. It's rabbit and flour. And for our duck soup, it's duck and porridge. I don't know why we use porridge, but it's it's duck and porridge and just water. Like we don't usually use a flavor, like we don't use a broth for, for rabbit or duck soup. It's just water. Hmm? Like a roux? I'm, I'm sorry, for the person who typed the last comment, would you mind um, turning your mic on and just asking? Because Sorry about that. Um, I'd heard about, I thought it was called rugaloo, but maybe it's rubaloo with a B, a rabbit stew of some sort. Maybe. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never heard it called anything but just rabbit. We just called it rabbit soup. Um, and you know, I'm trying to think of what the word for it was because they, they they called it and it was a Nakota word. Um, Raquel just had it. I I didn't miss it, but Raquel just mentioned it. Rubaloo. Okay. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the story behind that. Uh, would you be willing to share with what it was? Why is it called that? Do you know? I don't. No, I was sorry, I don't. That's what my mom called it, rubber boot. I've never heard that term before, but I mean, it, it's probably very, very similar, if not the same. Um, yeah, thanks, Raquel. It was um, part of uh, uh, on the MetisGathering.ca. There's mm -hmm. 10 episodes of Leah Dorian doing um, a podcast and one of them was about food from the Métis and she had brought it up and I just wondered if that was maybe what it was. Oh, I bet you that might be the Métis term for it. I, I, I'm trying to remember what the name for, for it 
for for us was it was a Nakoda word. It was rabbit soup, and then I and I can't for right right now. It's eluding my mind, but um, yeah, no. And then and, and back home, like on Okanese, we just in English terms we just called it rabbit soup, but it, that it was just rabbit meat that was like we cut up the rabbit, and then we we had a flour based broth, and that was that was it. It was a very very simple soup. Um, but it fed everybody. Like one rabbit could feed like eight people, twelve people. Like it, 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 we stretched it, and but we'd fight over the head. I do know, I do remember that because the rabbit brain is this, that's and the eyes. I like rabbit eyes. Um, they, they're like jelly. I know you haven't tried it. Someday I'll take you. No, sorry, oh, my, thank my you. oldest one is giving me a look, but they don't. They don't know. Um, like they don't get to eat that kind of stuff because. I'm stingy and they're they're squeamish. So <laughs> squeamish. Um, I'm gonna look into that some more. And what did you say the name of the podcast is? Sorry, it was Leah Dorian mm-hmm. and on MeteeGathering.ca. I unfortunately cannot say the word, I would completely butcher it. No worries. I'm gonna look for this podcast because it's good for me to learn as well. Um, that, that's one of the things I really appreciate when we're doing events like this, when people share what they know about it, like, like about the rabbit soup or about, about even bullet soup, because I only know what I learned. And I mean, it, it's informal teaching. It's, it's by observing or hearing little stories from the kitchens of my cook and my aunties and my mom. Um, but, you know, every household has different stories and different teachings. And it's, it's really... It's really an amazing opportunity for me to learn for, for everybody else what teachings they might have, what, what's similar, what's different. So thank you for sharing that and for asking that question because now I, I have an opportunity to go and look and learn some more myself. Oh, that I can't just hear that. Bannock is so heavy. You know what? I actually I just want to get this wipe because I put yeah. the spoon down and I see the broth there. I had a cloth here, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Because we left this a little bit wet now. This cloth is a little bit wet. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so my bannock recipe, recipe I say very loosely, is um, about four um four cups estimate um flour with four teaspoons of baking powder, a bit of salt, I would say about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt, Um, and then two cups of fairly warm water, not hot, but not cold, but above room temperature. You want it to be warm enough to make the, the baking powder get all happy. And I use a quarter cup of melted butter like I said, I like to rub the surface with butter once it comes out of the oven and it's still hot, so it absorbs in. And then I give it a light sprinkling of salt. That's that's very that was very secret knowledge, but it's no longer secret knowledge. And then um, I do like to let my dough rest for about ten to fifteen minutes before I press it out on a baking sheet. And then I poke the holes. And I, I use a chopstick for this because I like making patterns with it. And then I bake at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes on, a, on the middle rack. I, th- this recipe is written down someplace and um, I, can, I can share the link once I find it or I can send it to Courtney and she can forward it or to Kristen either, either way. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just kind of a very straightforward. And I, you, like, I mean, when we learned how to make it, we were, it was like my auntie going here, you need this many handfuls and then a few palmfuls of baking powder. And I kind of like just, I had to figure out the measurements because people kept asking, well, how much did you put in? And I'm like, three palmfuls. And then I'm like, everybody has different sized hands. And it's, uh... sorry, I can't read that. Uh, how many cups of water for the bag? Oh, two cups. I do, I do two cups and about a quarter cup of butter. Your, your dough should not be sticky but it also shouldn't be shaggy, if that makes any sense. It should be a nice, soft dough. If you find that maybe, because now again, my measurements aren't precise, especially when it comes to to the flour, because 
I'm not always using a measuring cup. Sometimes it's palm full. Sometimes it's a teacup full. Sometimes it's eyeballing it into the bowl if I'm making it out in, like in the bush, because sometimes we do that too. Um, really follow your gut with the manic. Like, like when I say that, I mean, does it feel like soft and supple? If not, if it feels like it's firm and dry, add a little bit more water. If it, if it is too moist and it's very sticky and you're having trouble forming it into a ball, add more flour. Um, I've never really seen any of my cookums or my aunties or even my mom really measure when she make when they make bannock. It's about feel. And I have to admit that. I found that it's very difficult to measure precisely when slight, slight variations in the weather, the humidity, for example, um, a rainy day will affect how much denser your flour is, elevation, because the, the amount of flour I typically use at home was different than the amount of flour that I needed when I was in Toronto. Um, like the gingerbread dough needed a whole extra cup more flour than I used when I made that same recipe at home to have the same outcome. And I like, with me, everything is about feel. It's not necessarily precision. I don't use a scale. I have some measuring cups, I kind of use them. Um, it's very much about the feel. And, and at the end of the day, if you didn't like the way it turned out, try again. You know, it's, I, it, oh yes, I'm cutting, sorry. Are you gonna cut that bannock? Yes, I'll cut the bannock. You can plug it in. My bannock is. Yeah, so I, I tend to make very thick bannock. Um, thick bannock is the best bannock, though. That's why the kids don't care for the crust. They're all for the for the um, the thick, soft stuff. <laughs> bottom, bottom of the middle piece. <laughs> What do you what do you want me to do? Cut this off. Like that? Well yeah. so now it just looks like a big piece of cake. <laughs> okay. Do you have a bowl that we can put these in? Next to you. Or am I just stacking it on the cutting board? You can stack it. <laughs> but um I could get a bowl. Now see, so this is the piece that I usually end up eating. And it's fine because it's like crackers, but the kids always make me do this. Thank you. Cut the bottom off. We just like the soft stuff. We do. They do the same thing with my sourdough, though. They'll just like eat all the inside. I don't of like them. sourdough anymore. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I know, I'm sorry. I Can have a here. Here? Pardon? Come here. Oh. I have a sourdough starter that I received from a friend. Um, actually, I have two of them now. Um, yes, sweetie. And they're both separate yeah. starters. They both have separate names. They, can't they, can't say they both taste different. Um, but I, I love sourdough. It just takes a really long time. Yeah. So, uh, I've discovered that sourdough is. Goes really with splashes, right? <laughs> <laughs> when the people on here they dip down and make dishes. Yeah. What are you doing? No, I was going to take a picture of the bowl, but. So when, when we do go visiting on two years, different families do have different dishes. Not every household makes bullet soup. Um, like some households make hamburger macaroni soup. Some people make wild meat soup. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, so this is gonna sound so bad, but it's a lot of fun when you're young and you get to go visit because you get to eat at every house you go to. And, um, I mean, the, the older people drink tea and coffee and play cards and visit, and the kids get fed and sit in the living room and we visit. But it's also fun because you get to taste a little bit of everything. Yes, you get to eat at every house. Like by the end of the day, you were so full. It's like you had a massive turkey dinner, but really you were just eating everywhere you went. And um, yeah, it's, it, I, you know what? I think that New Year's Day is that much more special because every family that is serving that's cooking it's really their time to shine and show their best dish their best soup that they make 
know, some people make roasts and they'll serve you a full roast dinner when you go to their house. And, you know, it's, it's that like, look at what I've made for you because you've come to visit me on this day and, and help me start off the year in a good way. And it's for the community, I feel that it's, it's an incredible tradition that they that still carried on. It's, there's something magical about it. I don't know how else to really explain it, but being able to go and visit, like, cause then you're not always visiting at everybody's house. I mean, you, you'll go and have coffee with like aunties or uncles that, that you visit a lot, but when you get to go from house to house to check on everybody, it's, it's really, a, it's a really different experience. It's like a potluck, but you're welcoming people into your home. You get to you get to have that good energy brought into your home, and people are leaving with the good energy that you're providing them through their through your food. And go ahead, you can have a piece. Sorry, towels can't handle it. They starving. As well, the soup actually should be. We should be good. I'll check to see the potatoes. Would you mind passing me a fork? I'm just going to see how how close to the potatoes. So yeah, yes, no, it's not, not everybody makes bullet soup. Um, and, and, and everybody serves something slightly different. And it, it's fantastic. It's honestly, if, it, if this is something that more people did in the city, like if somebody posted, hey, I'm serving New Year's Day, I would go to their house. I can't even, I can't take a potato out. <laughs> They're so stupid. I'm trying. Okay. Uh. No, it's still not tender enough. Hmm. I'm going to say it's going to be another, another 10, 15. No, I'm good right now. Thank you. I need a spot for this. <laughs> so yes, um, with the meatball stew, with the bullet soup, it's going to take a little bit longer. You want to cook it long enough so the vegetables um, that you put in are soft. My potatoes are still firm. It's gonna go for a little bit longer. The meatballs are probably cooked through and ready to eat, but um, I insist that they have at least a potato or two. I know it's just a starch, but it's some kind of vegetable. Um, Riley, I love love would you mind plugging in the phone? I've noticed I got a little screen pop up. Is there any other questions anybody has regarding the bullet soup? Um, or, or, or any other questions for that matter? Perfect. Yes, it. I'm, I'm really liking standing this close to mine because I can I can smell it every time I pull the lid off. It's just like it's so good. I um actually we have a small dog, and she is she has not left my side. She's literally right beside me because she's waiting for it to finish. Um, <clears throat> she actually I put onion in this. I don't like eating or anything with onion, so I will make her something separate that she can eat after. We'll give her a milk bone and that might suffice, but. Um, she also likes to have a little bit of bannock, mm -hmm. just a little bit. She's she's kind What's of like a people. Favorite dish? What's, your favorite dish? <clears throat> What's your favorite dish? What's your favorite dish? Yeah. Mm. That's actually a really hard one. Yeah. So Talika is um, Talika is one of those those kids that kind of just gets really creative and some days if if I'm too busy and I'm not and I haven't come down and cooked breakfast because I'm usually the one that likes to cook in the kitchen because I'm a control freak and the kitchen is my space and I'm kind of you know retentive about how things go or where things go or um you know how how are you using my dishes or my knives because they're I'm particular about that but Talika is one of those people who doesn't care <laughs> they, they'll touch all of my stuff and play with all of my ingredients. Yep. And um, so they, they get really creative and they make a lot of things up. But the most recent dish that Talika made was breakfast for us. Pancakes, which is actually probably my favorite yeah. so far. Yeah, it's fun for her. I uh, like flipping it. And she, she does it all by scratch, from scratch and by eye. So it's like flour, eggs, milk, butter, and then and then just whips it up in the morning. and, and I know nine is really young to be using a stove, but um, I have complete control. Yeah, I, and, and I mean, I'm usually floating around checking because again, touching my stuff, but um, 
No, Talika, Talika cooks a lot of different things, um, both with me and her, and her aunties and my mom, uh, her cook them, and sometimes by herself because mm -hmm. that's, she's just always been um, a go-getter in the kitchen, which I love because I'll take nights off and Tal will just cook. Tal also makes a killer bannock. Uh, it's on the counter. Sorry, so one of the most recent things that Tal um, purchased for themselves with uh, with their Christmas money was like the world's smallest cooking set. I feel then you can close. you can you can get right close, and it's yeah, it's the smallest little pan ever. Yeah, so. a spatula, a pot, a pan. Can you give me a bowl. Even with a little lid. And a ladle. No, not that bowl. And you can pretty much light candles. So thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so she cooks over a flame, which is, yes. I mean, when, when we go camping and we spend a lot of time camping, it's so um, fun. We like to cook over over an open fire. It's I we have cast iron dishes and I like we love them so. Tal likes the idea of cooking over a candle because it's like cooking over a cast iron, over a fire. Mm -hmm. I'm going to burn myself. You're gonna need oven mitt. Thank you. I really like having helpers. This is amazing. <laughs> oh man, that looks so good. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, I want to just test one of these potatoes real quick. I do recommend letting your um your soup cool off before trying to eat it. It is very, very hot. I can't pick it up because it's sticking. There we go. So um, our soup is ready. It's had a lot of like cooking area because it's being cooked in a big roaster as opposed to a little pot on the stove. I'm just gonna show you. It is a nice, um, like it's not a clear broth. It is a bit cloudy. And then that's, that, that's from the flour. And there's a little bit of oil on the surface because I used a leaner cut of meat. Like I said, um, if I was using a, a full fat meat or a, a wild meat that had a lot of fat to it, I would skim some of that grease off the top <clears throat> because I don't like an overly greasy soup. But I, I do remember having uncles get mad at me because the, the soup didn't have that nice the oil it's supposed to have. I also used to get in trouble for cleaning my ducks too much. <clears throat> uh, Great Grandma Velma would get mad and say, there's no flavor. You've cleaned everything off of this duck. I, I just, I don't know. I was learning. I was learning. I know now to leave a little bit of stuff on it. Is there, is there any soup that you don't, well, you guys are picky about your soups. I was thinking about the soups. I, you know, I love soup. Um, we grew up on it. There's lots of, when there's lots of grandkids, like there was at my cook's house. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to let it cool a bit so I don't burn my mouth. When there's lots of grandkids running around, soup was like the dish that they cooked. You got soup and bannock because it fed a lot of people um, with not like with not a lot of work and ingredients. So we had, we always had a lot of soup in the house. And I, I don't get me wrong, I love soup um, of every shape and size except for tripe. That is the one soup. And 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 I mean I'm sure if I tried it now, I would probably not hate it as much. But um, as a kid, I remember at the powwows, Cookham would give you like she'd give you five bucks and say, "Go find me tripe soup." And the fear of actually finding it, like you never did anything with only half of the energy, uh, for lack of um, a better way of saying it. You always did things with the full amount of energy you were supposed to do it with. So. And we would go out and look for the uh, this tripe soup, and I would be the one that would have to go look for it. And I, I kind of just be like praying, please let nobody serve tripe soup at this powwow, because you carry it back, and they always filled it to the brim, and it always spilt on you. And then you would smell like tripe 
for the rest of the powwow. And I hated the way tripe smelled, um, but she loved it. And 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 uh, that was that was a thing. Um, yeah, you guys are lucky. You don't have to do that because nobody ever makes tripe soup anymore. Oh, okay. So I guess we're at eight thirty now. Um, I, I I realize we're supposed to be done at eight thirty. So. I just want to thank everybody that's joined us today um, and cooked along with us. And for those of you that weren't able to join along and cook with us, I hope that at some point you decide to try making bullet soup. Like I said, this is a real treat for me because it's normally only made on New Year's Day. So to, to be able to have it um, on a non-New Year's Day is a real treat and something completely out of the ordinary. I'd like to thank RPL and Reconciliation like you are for, for inviting me to come and cook with everybody and welcoming you into my kitchen. I hope everybody enjoyed themselves and I hope that you enjoy the soup. <laughs>